So you've been studying real hard for that EC Council exam and you're ready to sign up and go conquer the world with it. But how do you do that? What are, we, what are the steps that it takes to make that happen? I'm Daniel Lowry and you've probably seen me in some of your EC Council based training here at IT Pro TV. I'm actually joined with also somebody you've probably seen, a one Mr. Adam. Hello. Glenn. There he is right there, that's right. We're usually your trainers when it comes to EC Council based material. And uh, so that's why we're here to help you guys out with this one little facet that you might not have thought of. How do I sign up for the exam? What do I need to do? What are the requirements? How do I make that ball happen? Well, luckily for you, we've we've searched the annals of, of the internet and have discovered <gasps> exactly. <Daniel. laughs> yes, <laughs> Easy Council does make this information available, but it's not just as simple as, hey, let me sign up for the exam, go sit the exam, pass the exam, get a certification and rule the world, right? So uh, we wanna make sure that you are properly prepared to perform this function. So Adam, uh, we have yeah. the EC Council. We've got some stipulations we, around this. We, thing, we right? have a couple of things. You know, e you're right. EC Council does a great job. I want to thank them for, for being as transparent as they are. They put some really good documentation out there about certification exam policies. They have a, a specific list of criteria we want to make sure as candidates and potential examinees that we're all aware of and we follow. You know, it's about playing the game by the rules, right? Yes. To be successful. And EC Council sets the rules and well, we want to play that game. We got to follow the rules. So join me here. We just want to quickly give you the ability to orient yourself so that the last step in your journey, as Daniel was suggesting, the journey to become successful and be certified, whether it's CEH, whether it's CHFI, ECES, ECIH, the list goes on. We all know there's a, a huge number of really interesting and exciting credentials you can go ultimately and try to get a certification from EC Council. Whatever you're doing, you need to play by the certification exam policy rules. We're putting this uh, information together for you in this episode. Just show you the URL. We'll make sure you could see it there. This is EC Council's own certification exam policy website with their own policies. And we wanna point out to you that when you go through and take a look, there are several things, a non-disclosure agreement, the EC Council certification agreement, as a potential exam uh, taker, you need to abide by these, sign them, and have them in place. And of course, the security and integrity, integrity policy, all really important. Information about all of them can be found on the page with instructions about where to view the full documentation in PDF form and the ability to go through that process. And then down below, as you'll see here, there are some additional security policies and EC Council lists all of them out for you. You can kind of just interact here as necessary. Hey, I might need to retake if there's an issue with my exam and I didn't meet the success criteria the first time, no problem. Hey, I might need to go ahead and retest at the request of EC Council. All right, so there's policies around that kind of stuff. You obviously just wanna make sure you're aware of that. Maybe you're doing a beta exam and you wanna know what the rules are about that. But aside from all of this, which is really just the baseline, specifically by exam, and it would be good for you to know this, you can go up to certification. And I mentioned several that we provide content for here at IT Pro TV, but there is a long list. And I would encourage you to look by exam based on what you're specifically interested in. Align with any of our courses, always good to know the latest information. They're all listed there. We'll use CEH as our example, because there are some specific additional examination requirements around experience that are unique to CEH. You wanna be aware of those because there's three ways you can qualify to take the CEH exam according to EC Council's own policies. And when we go down here, we go down past just all the details about the exam itself, we could see under the FAQ, first area right here, what are the eligibility uh, criteria to apply for the CEH and C exam. You'll see to be able to sit as a candidate, you must either, so this is a meet one of three options, hold an earlier CEH version of certification, meaning anything prior to the current versions that you are pursuing. And they detail out what that would look like. You can have a minimum of two years work experience in the information security uh, area in what they call the InfoSec domain. Meaning you work in IT, have a focus on information security and associated practices and disciplines. But note there, 
you will need to pay a $100, 100 US dollar specifically non-refundable application fee. There's details on the website specifically under the CEH section where you can get that application, provide that fee, and then have EC Council certify that you're able to take the exam and or you've attended an official EC Council training event. You can see there that if you do that, uh, there are uh, also, I should say, will be a $100 application fee. However, training fees shall include this fee, meaning essentially it's bundled in your training when you do your training uh, directly. And so you could see as long as you align with one of these three experiential categories and meet that requirement, you are able to, according to EC Council's own policies, sit for and take the CEH exam. Of course, you have to bring uh, the knowledge and the time that you take to study, bring all that to bear and put that to work in the exam to be successful. But hey, that's what we help you to do here at IT Pro TV, Daniel and I. And of course, your hard work, combine all that with one of those elements, and well, you're off to the races, and hopefully you're gonna be successful. So we just wanted to take this opportunity to make sure that you hear from us directly, since we provide that training for you, what it takes to be successful. Gotta spend time with us, Daniel and I, but ultimately, you've also gotta follow the rules. EC Council sets those. You combine everything together and well, there you go. Now all I gotta do is sit for the exam, spend the time and ultimately collect that certification. So I think we both wanna be able to wish you good luck Absolutely. in that pursuit. Wanna spend time with you, hanging out and helping you understand how to be successful. We both look forward to doing that. And of course, we'd love to hear from you once you are. Always get back in touch with us, tell us what your experiences were like and tell us you were successful so we can help you celebrate that success and continue your learning journey with us here at IT Pro TV. Nothing like a good celebration of a cert well earned. And now you know what you gotta do, some of the rules you gotta follow, right? As Adam has said, play by the rules so that you can get signed up, apply necess uh, as necessary and for the correct exam, making sure you're following all the criteria, filling out the forms and getting squared away with EC Council so that you can sit that exam and be successful. Thanks so much for watching everyone and we look forward to seeing you in your EC Council training here at IT Pro TV. Thank you.